Welcome to the Phillips Virtual Hymns Learning Zen. I'm delighted to introduce our presentation, Responding to Intimate Cybersecurity Threats. And please join me in welcoming our speaker for this session, Michael McNeil. Michael is the Global Product Security and Services Officer for Royal Phillips. Michael? Thank you very much. Yes, um, definitely want to spend a little bit of time talking about the, the fact that we face on a day in and day out basis a number of cybersecurity exploits and threats and vulnerabilities in the marketplace. It's something that we have to address and manage on an ongoing basis. And I think it's very critical and important to be able to respond to those imminent threats in a much more proactive way and make sure that you and your teams are in place to be able to do that. When we look at the overall structure, again, it ties back to the fact that you need to make sure that you are aligning with very much transparency. As a part of the post-market guidance, you want to make sure that you have a very strong disclosure program that you can be able to leverage and execute. That program then needs to make sure that it encompasses activities like security testing. So when you're in your production phase and you have solutions in the marketplace, you want to have continuous, continuous monitoring within the program, and you also want to be able to conduct appropriate risk assessments and attestation. All of that is core and centered around the fact that you want a security program based on appropriate policies and standards, similar to the NIST 800-53 and the ISO IEC 8001-2. And when you look at all of this, post-production, bringing to market and alignment, you should be able to go to market with a good security by design that's executed under a appropriate QMS system. That all leads to now, once you have that, you need to look at two different major forces and how you wanna to respond to imminent threats. And so when you understand that you have to have an incident response process, make sure that you're looking at what your internal um, controls and notifications are, and then you wanna make sure that you identify based upon those vulnerabilities and assess the threats. Some of them need to be documented and understood whether or not they're controlled or uncontrolled. This will generate back into what you need to do when it pertains to understanding how you want to put in your appropriate compensating controls or mitigation. Then you want to be able to align and validate with your verification and validation processes appropriate patches that need to be deployed based upon whether or not those risks are in the uncontrolled factor. You then want to be able to communicate very effectively to your customers, initially within 48 hours and then ongoing based upon how you've been able to update your solutions. When you leverage your communications, you want to have a appropriate vehicle that can be communicated directly to the customers as well as leveraging the health information um, security and, and analysis sharing council. So you want to leverage the different certs, um, Department of Homeland Security, the HI SACs, and other activities so that it can get the word out so that your customers know where to go and where you would be able to get additional information. So all of those elements are key as the threats are coming in and how you need to be able to respond effectively to those threats. Again, when we look at Phillips's direct process, we try to take a very much organized approach around how we would do disclosures and how we would coordinate that with the communications. Back in 2014 in November, Phillips was one of the first organizations to launch a coordinated vulnerability disclosure program. This was two years ahead of when this became a requirement that's been documented by the FDA which took place in 2016. So when we look at that, we have a team in place that monitors and understands what the activities are. We then work with the reported solution organization around making sure that we validate that particular vulnerability in our com complaint and in our CAPA system. We then pull together an organized team in order to be able to respond very effectively and in a timely manner and then we conduct overall a post-mortem. All of these activities have to align to the FDA's timeline, which has requirements around the disclosure within 30 to 60 days, depending upon the level of severity 
and then also are reporting to the ICS CERT, um, which is the sister organization now of Department of Homeland Security. So again, you want to make sure that you have all of these elements. They need to be tied within your executed and, and, and identified as a part of your overall quality management system. Um, again, you need to practice your, your, your craft here and make sure that you are doing appropriate tabletops and exercises within your organization because these vulnerabilities will be taking place and you want to be in a good position to be able to communicate effectively internally and be able to resolve any problems or issues and then externally with what you need to provide to your customers and our health delivery organizations on the appropriate execution. So again, you can find more information out on this directly on the Philips website and be able to get direct access to this through our product security portal. Thank you very much and I hope you have a pleasant day. Thank you, Michael. To see more Philips Virtual Hymns Learning Zone presentations, please visit the Philips at Hymns 2020 homepage.